Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Svelte Radio. Today, we're coming from you on the day of the cinnamon bun in Sweden. Ooh, very nice. I'm Kevin, your host, uh, or one of your hosts, and I'm joined by Sean and Anthony. What's up, guys? Hey, regular episode. Just chat, just us, just chatting. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice. It was a long time since we recorded as well, so it's going to be fun. It has. It's been a while. And and the weird thing about this, I think the thing that tells me how long it's been is definitely Kevin's hair. Obviously, it's a podcast, so you can't see it, but it's got very long. I'm quite impressed. Yeah, it's, it's time to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm still giving myself a haircut because I, I don't want to go into a barber. And yeah, and yeah I, so <laughs> I don't know if people are still giving themselves haircuts. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, tr- I tried, like I was, I was getting my wife to do it, but I went to my actual real like hairdresser and she sort of, you know, usually says kind of what, what do you want to do this time? You know, what do you want? And I just say, well, my, you know, my no, no hair cutting skills wife has been cutting it for two years and I really like it. So can you do what she does? And obviously that doesn't <laughs> go down particularly well, <laughs> well but, but, um, but I, I can't describe what, what, what I liked about it and it, and it went pretty well. So. I've kind of got my my lockdown haircuts become my normal haircut now, which is which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's got to be the case for a lot of people. Like they change their yeah. their hairstyle and stuff. Just, I was just gonna say I've been thinking about getting like a shaver and actually doing like a proper job instead of uh, bicking it regular scissors. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do they call it do they call it bicking it there. No, I don't know what bicking it is. Because no. because um, it's like in the UK we have a razor called a bic. Oh, uh, like a little cheap special razor. Isn't it a so when you pen? Shave your hair it's, a, off. it's a pen brand to me. BIC. I think it's a. I, it is yeah, as well. I think. I think, kind of, I think it's both. Of, yeah, I, th- I think it's the same brand, and they basically just branched out from from disposable pens to disposable razors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just it just means shaving all your hair off. Cool um, updates. Uh, I we have been built. We've been continuing to build our app in Svelte at work, and it's coming along nicely. We had some like refresh issues with. TypeScript and SvelteKit, but I think it's been solved. We, we may want to have Steve Kinney on, who's our front-end uh, tech lead on on this app. So um, that's my yeah. update on, on the Sounds Svelte good. side of things. Um, in terms of updates for me, well, Beyond got funded. Hooray! Oh, congrats. So we have uh, Yay. We got a two million, two million funding round thanks to Fuel Ventures. So that's awesome. This gives us the ability to hire a much bigger team, Across the, across the board across the whole company and scale the product to where we want it to be. So pretty exciting stuff. Obviously, you know, funding comes with blessing and a curse. It's nice that we are, we have the, you know, the financial security, but obviously scaling is hard and uh, it's going to be an interesting journey trying to hire all these people. So, you know, it's, an, it's a journey I don't mind going on. Bit of experience nice. in that. So it'll be good fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. And yeah. I guess you, yeah, you guys are uh, looking for Svelte developers? Indeed, that is absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. We are looking for Svelte developers actively. Um, <laughs> Everyone so yeah, seems to be wanna, looking for If you want a job at work at Beyond, come and chat to me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not, you're not wrong. There's quite a lot of jobs. Actually, I posted my uh, my job in the job channel and on the Svelte Discord, hoping that you know it would sit there for quite a while. It didn't. It sort of got scrolled off pretty quickly. So, it's again, yeah. it's both good and bad. It's nice that we've got a few jobs coming through now. Yeah. It's but nice you can have see. a look at um, jobs.beyond.com. There's plenty of different roles there, so please do put feel free we'll put to put a link in the in the show notes as well. All right, yeah. What on my end? I've been uh, I've just finished the uh, the Svelte Summit website, which we're uh, going to talk about in a bit. But uh, I think before that, we want to talk a little bit about like the newsletter that just came out. So there's a bunch of new stuff. As always, you can find it on the on the Svelte blog, the regular old svelte.dev slash blog. And uh, yeah, so there are some new features. Svelte body, you, you can now use actions on that. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that, of course, so I love actions. It's not something I've been missing, really, but I guess it's nice to have. What else? There's something that I've been doing more of recently because I wrote my own library for asynchronous JavaScript loading. Because obviously mm-hmm. you, you can't really guarantee when a lab will be ready and you can start operating with it on the DOM. Actions make that so easy. It's it's just unreal. So I've, I've got like a, re, a sort of revitalized love for actions now. Oh, nice. It's exciting. Yeah. So I think some of the showcases here, like the new 
like the uh, the guy that built the Mac OS website. That was pretty cool. Did oh, you yeah. guys see that? I did indeed. Buttery yeah. smooth. Yeah. So that was first built in <laughs> React, I think, and he changed it to Svelte. This is pure, yep. pure the dev. And am I right in understanding that he's actually, you know, in, in terms of the development sphere, he's actually quite new to dev as well? I think he's a student. A student, yeah, sure. okay. So he's not, his commercial experience isn't isn't huge, but yeah, he's done a really good job of that. It's really impressive. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably have I mean, him I think I think this is how portfolios should be. Yeah, some... Mm. <laughs> um, something impressive, you know. Um, I think w w when a lot of people, I think when they learn to code, they do, you know, the to do app, and and then Free Code Camp has to do uh, a bunch of other like sort of cruddy style apps. But I don't think it impresses anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you want to really, you know, have one piece that impresses someone, it's probably something like this. Yeah, I, th I think he got a job from doing it as well. That's pretty pretty great. Uh, yeah, I think it, it is a Svelte job, right? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that that rings a bell. Actually, well, if the thing is, I suppose this is this is your CV, especially at that point. This is your CV, and I think that I've always sort of felt that it's a really good way to to get yourself out there. I've always thought it was a really good idea up until the point of actually implementing it, or doing it myself, and then I've always gone, mm. <laughs> you know, it's That's it's a shame because I would love to have one of these. <laughs> yeah. Basically, my the only homepage I have online since I was like sixteen or something now is just a a really basic static blog that has two posts in it because I also can't bother to blog. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What's what's uh, what else is new? Brave Search is using Svelte. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I guess they launched some kind of uh, is it like a Google thing, but. Just brave yeah, zone version they're, they're that doesn't track you. Search, yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Super impressive. Uh, we've also brought on Blue from the Discord as a maintainer. So we've got a few new maintainers Ooh. recently. Uh, Mouse Blue and obviously Gregor Flies. I think we've already mentioned, but um, yeah. yeah, the the maintainers team is is growing quite a lot, and these are all these are all people who've come from producing a lot of contributions to Svelte Core. Uh, via pull requests and stuff, and and uh, you know enough that we've decided that they'd be part of a, a good part of the team. So yeah, that's great. So there's a cool write up here as well, uh, pretty long write up. Let's see here. Yeah, by so the new stack. this is the a, the new stack. Yeah, they just published this today, so I just figured I'd throw it in. Not, not I think nothing new, but it really recaps the state of things which have really progressed this year. So I figured it would fit the title <laughs> that Svelte was growing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely does. And it recaps, yeah, just the uh, pros and cons for people who haven't heard of Svelte. So it's very uh, introductory, but um, I think it's, it was a pretty good write-up. Yeah. So how do they, nice. how do, they do these write-ups without the kind of natural bias that you get, uh, you know, when you sort of focus on one framework? How do they, how do, they do that? Well, they don't focus on one framework. <laughs> Sure, yeah, I, I, guess I, I guess that everyone has, uh, you know, everyone has favorites. You know what I mean? Uh, sure. I don't know. I think this guy, whoever wrote this, is a neutralish journalist. <laughs> he's, he says he's, he's uh, editor in chief at Container Solutions, a cloud native consultancy. Yeah. Okay. Maybe his maybe his job is just checking out new tools and stuff. Yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, I guess it's it's weird because for me, like the the natural path is you look at these things and then. You end up liking one, and you you sort of focus on that one a bit more, and then it's very hard to be neutral. I find, at least from my own perspective, it's very hard to be neutral. Yeah. So it's interesting to see to you know to see someone writing or whatever who's truly neutral. Yeah. So uh, his name is also humble. So I guess that helps. <laughs> his name's what? Humble. He's Charles humble. Humble. Literally. Humble. Yeah. Charles Humble. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was Johnny Neutral. <laughs> That's <Humble>. terrible. <laughs> All right, let's see here. What's what's next? Weekly Svelte. Um, this Sean. Yeah. So Scott Zelinsky has been talking about. Well, so first of all, he's been talking about move migrating to Svelte Kit, and he never really had like an announcement announcement, but he. 
at least put up a video on on his YouTube talking about it. And now he's committed to producing a weekly series about Svelte. And uh, I think he's about two or three episodes in now, and uh, it's pretty cool. So people should check it out. I put the link in the show notes. And that's Svelte Fridays, is that right? Uh, I think it's, he's calling it Weekly Svelte. He was, he was struggling with okay. naming it for a while. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, the That's the old day. So, yeah. So the most recent one I think is, is pretty cool because it actually exposed me to a couple of Svelte libraries that I haven't come across before. So like Svelte Date Picker and Svelte Drag were new to me. Uh, and then he made his own Svelte Element Query library, which basically uses an yes. action to mimic con- container queries. I'm not as I maybe I'm not like a CSS expert or like power <laughs> user enough to be that excited about container queries. I, I understand it's something new, but like sure it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, yeah, his his query library is just sort of a skeleton right now and it's it's in, in the works. But that felt data pick is worth a mention actually, because it's an it's interesting because obviously there's loads of data pickers out there and there's a few felt ones, and they all kind of follow the same sort of theme, including my own one, which is basically a fork of another one. Um, now, Svelte Calendar has had a massive rewrite recently, um, so that's pretty impressive, and it's, it's looking very good. It's very animated and, and, and flashy. But what's attracted a lot of people to this one, this, this date picker that, that Scott's um, pointed out, and it is really it's brand new, what's interesting about it is it's the opposite of flashy. It's really, it almost looks like the native built-in date picker in the browser, it's very basic, and for some reason, that's kind of its main selling point, that it, it feels like it's going to integrate well with anything. It's going to leave it up to you. Uh, it looks solid. It looks good, um, despite just being ultimately quite plain. Nice. Okay, let's check it out. Yeah, I'll stick the, yeah. the thing in the show notes. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So let's uh, let's talk about the the new Svelte Summit website. So I just published it. Uh, you should be able to see it on sveltesummit.com right now. If you haven't already, let's see here. <laughs> no, leaving time to of visit. Of course, it's down for some reason. Or is it? Always. No, it looks great. <laughs> um, really reflects yeah, the fall theme. Uh, it's great color choices. Um, yeah. And, yeah. As usual, this de- de- designed by by Wolfer. He's done all of the the Svelte Summit <laughs> yes, websites indeed. so far. I really like the the color scheme this time around. Yeah, yeah, I do. Good. Yeah, it Wait, looks orangey as well. Yeah, yeah. So so I uh, so I've been spending a couple of days building this, and uh, I realized while doing it that Svelte Kit is really nice. And it's so easy to work with. <laughs> is there anything this, about about this this uh, this version compared to previous versions? I guess it's it's um, built in Svelkit rather than Sapper. Yeah. So, so no. So so the last version was in Elder JS, I think. But I decided to rebuild yeah, this from right. the from from the ground up. Uh, another thing I realized while building this site is that CSS is awesome. Regular old CSS. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Explain. It, it it actually is quite nice. So I've I recently bought this course called Every Layout. Uh, it's it's a bit about like yeah. how you build using CSS. Yeah. How do I explain this? Like how you do CSS uh, as a general concept rather than making specific things for each small block of c- component. I don't know. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, I've been moving away from actually having my styling inside of the components because I don't find <gasps> I need it that much. Shot Kara. Yeah, I know, right? Wait, what? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, so, so I just have one big file. Oh Baby my god. Baby Rich is crying right now. <laughs> what? Well, Baby Rich is crying. It it is actually very nice in in a way. So so instead of having like a for example like a button component, you just you just have like a button class, right? And it it's you, you don't really need a component for a button. I mean, this isn't a wild it, idea, Kev. You're not you're not breaking new ground here. I know, <laughs> no. I know. But but you know, Svelte has its uh, scoped styles, so it's a uh, it's a bit of an unpopular opinion in the community, maybe. 
What if you need a leader? What if you need a disabled button or a hover button? Then you need yeah, to you modify can... it. Not really. And then you need to put your element classes in blocks. <laughs> <laughs> you have to use the block element model so that you know what part of your CSS refers to what part of your site. <laughs> block element modifier, block element modifier. Yeah, yeah ben, exactly. Right. <laughs> No, but so I it's it's a bit of an exaggeration. I've been, I have been using the the scoped styles as well for some some things. So I'm not a complete heretic yet. Yeah, I, I use a mix. I use I use global styles because my site has a theme, obviously. Yeah, and then I put like I guess like overrides and and anything pertinent only to just this part of the site I put inside the component. But my my component styles are generally lighter than. Um, yeah. And maybe like because I, I know that Rich strongly believes that all styles should be in a component. There should be no global style sheet. It's quite a different approach, and I don't know how that works in terms of theming an entire site because you've got no no, no base to extend from. Um, no. There's no inheritance there, right? There's no, there's no cascade, so I don't know how it would work out. But I think, I think you'd use just CSS custom properties. Yeah, I guess I guess that's one way of doing it. I suppose. Yeah, if you're I think you have to be really into your CSS for that. For that, so yeah, you have to know that you've got this this whole library of and and again, it did, didn't work with with IE until recently. It didn't work with IE. And IE was important until recently, sort of important. Yeah, and you had to use the pony fill, which you have to kind of execute with JavaScript and stuff. And there's a flash of unstyled. You know, there's all sorts of problems with it. Yep. But yeah, the CSS variables definitely can is a workable approach. But I think you need to be very good handling that so I don't think I'm at that level yet I mean I'd like to get there but I'm not that level yet <laughs> I can definitely it requires... recommend uh, playing with CSS it's 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 so much fun yeah when you, when you kind of get it so I, I think strategy, one, that's it. one thing I've I've found is that like so Tailwind Tailwind for example brings it to the other extreme right they have only classes and they have utilities like all of the classes are utility classes, right? But I find like you could you can you can do both, right? You can have utility classes that do certain things. Like you could have a utility class that makes a a box for a card, for example. It doesn't have to be just one class, one property. I find that's that's a nice uh, like midway between the, the two extremes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, isn't isn't that kind of the tailwind approach where you've kind of got? It's almost like a, a class does a a certain thing. It's not quite one to one or anything like that, but it's pretty much. I think. Yeah, it's pretty much one 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 class one property. All right, let's let's move on from CSS. <laughs> <laughs> so, so another thing that I found is the uh, email enhance action that is in the example project. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it makes it possible to, or it makes it easier to work with forms when you don't have JavaScript in your Svelkit pro project. So you just mm -hmm. build your uh, your uh, form like you would in a backend framework, and then you enhance it using this action. So it doesn't do the actual form submission. Like you said you. Chains. You said you got it from an example project. What do you mean, example project? Yeah. So, so the Svelkit uh, when when you init a new Svelkit project, you get uh, you get to pick between like an example project and a skeleton project. Oh, okay. So yeah. So the example project has this enhance action in it. I'd recommend checking it out. It's pretty nice. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least. I I spend a lot of a lot more time than I want to admit admit on this this thing. So color spaces are really cool and most monitors only show a certain number of colors, right? But there's this DCI P3 color space that's 25% larger. So if you have a particular monitor, you can see 25% more colors. But the only browser that supports this is Safari. Oh no! Which is which is interesting. It's it's usually the <laughs> other way around, right? The every other browser supports everything, but Safari is last. But for this, it's it's the other way around, and it's been like that for since 2016. So so you would use this for like if if you want colors that are a bit more intense, 
And so I've I've been playing around with this on the Svelte, Svelte Summit website. So if you if you're using it with Safari on an iPhone or a Mac, you'll get colors that are a lot more intense and vibrant than if you use, for example, so Chrome. Does my iPhone support this? This yes, these, these colors. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, I suppose it makes sense that Apple support it because they are, you know. Designy focused, yeah. <laughs> does it? Yes. Uh, so, does it fall, does it progressively fall back to mm -hmm. normal colors? Uh, I don't it know does. how this works. Yeah. Okay. So, so the the way I made it work is I have a CSS property that. Well, I have the I'm using the at supports thing for CSS, and I'm redefining the uh, the variable in there if it if there's support. So if it doesn't support it, it just falls back to a less fun popping color. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Wow. It is. <laughs> Whoa. I can't see this. Sorry, I can't. I just, what? what am I looking at? <laughs> and Anthony is uh, holding up his phone to the, to the camera here and we're in awe. Wow. Amazing colors. This look good. This look good. Of course, yeah. you know, if I show you this on the screen here and then it goes through all the internet and comes out with your monitor on the other end, then you can't see the what well, no. I can see anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Chrome anyway. Um, well, but it, I mean, it, it, it looks nice, but then a lot of things look nice on this phone because it's shiny and new. Right. <laughs> am I seeing, well, am wait, I seeing just, more than 16.7 so billion you don't colors? Use, you don't use an iPhone and he just told you that this thing only works on iPhone. It's an iPhone. Oh, it 13. is. Okay, okay. Oh, no. yeah. oh, is it, it the does new look, iPhone? It does look bright. And, hey? Is it the new one? Yeah, it's a new new one. Ooh. Well, I I threw my I threw my iPhone X in a hot tub just before, uh, well, like last week. So this got planned? released almost the next week. So I bought it. <laughs> Sounds like well, planned obsolescence you know, to me. Well, it's a waterproof phone, so I was like, ah, oh, I'll just take it in a hot tub, take some photos, and I did. And then I dropped it in there. I was like, oh no, you know, what, joking. What I picked you, it up and the screen. What did you take flickering. photos of? <laughs> People in the hot tub. Including myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see. No, I, it's, I did. I did. Right. So I was, I was taking. It was just me and some friends. I was taking some photos. You know, as you, as you do. But the weird thing about this is that I could never prove to you that what I'm saying is true because obviously the photos are only on the phone and therefore were not backed up. Right. So I've lost the photos that I was taking that caused me to drop the phone. It's like a double. So limit. I can't prove I was taking photos off. <laughs> that sucks. Well, yeah. At least you can marvel at the uh, the colors on the website. So yeah. that's good. But yeah, so all of the browsers on iPhone actually use this, right? Because the uh, they all of the browsers use the Safari rendering. They're all Safari. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but th there are ways you can actually get this working on Chrome and Firefox as well. So I've done that. Uh, the The way you do that is by you actually have to use a CSS background with a one by one pixel of the color. And then you have to repeat that color and then background clip the text. So to get so the the color on the uh, on the title text, for example, should be in this DCI three P three color space, even on Chrome on on the desktop. Uh, it's just that it's a background of a simple pixel that's just repeated. So that's that was a bit tricky to get working, but it, it was it was a lot of fun to. To build this website, nice. yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I guess we should talk about a bit about like Svelte Summit in general. I so, think so, yeah, yeah. So it's on the the twentieth of November. It's a Saturday this time around, so people can have a an after drink or whatever they want to do. The CFPs are open, so if you have a fun talk you want to do, you should uh, you should submit one or two. Um, yeah, <laughs> we we when want you say all two, kinds of talks. Is this is this is this like just just hammer it until we'll get through, or is this a constructive way of um, you know different topics and see which one gets in? I don't know. <laughs> it's not a scattergun approach, is it? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we're still we're still talking, like we don't even know how long the events we're targeting for uh so there we we it's we have to work backwards from there to figure out how many talks slots that we have uh and therefore how many we can accept so 
I feel like uh, there's there's a bit of we probably need to meet about that. <laughs> it's okay to get CFPs now, but like we have to figure that that one out. Um, yeah, the the CFPs are open until the thirtieth of October, I think. Okay, so yeah, Something gives a that. gives a good good amount of time to record everything pre recorded again, right? Yep, like last yeah, time. I think it's it's working well. Yeah, agreed. And there's uh, also if you if you work at a company that wants to sponsor Svelte Summit, there are a couple of different ways you can do that as well. So there's a sponsor page that you can take a look at on the website and uh, reach out to me if you're interested. And uh, yeah, that's that's Felt Summit for now. <laughs> um, and I I would like to I'm still very keen on organizing a watch party in New oh. York. Um, because I think that that would be an interesting way to kick off the summit and just restart in-person events. I see you have uh, meetups on your agenda, so I figured I would throw yeah. that in there. I was going to mention that. So there's two meetups that are currently, uh, at least two, that are opening up immediately, well, as soon as possible, aren't there? So yeah. Stockholm and, and, and hopefully London. So we've had somebody step forward to help us organize London again. So that could Do you have a good. date? No, we don't. We don't yet. Uh, do you, you have one for Stockholm? No, no, no. It's okay. Probably around the probably like a week before uh, Svelte Summit, or even right. a watch party. Watch party, yeah, yeah. I could be cool. Fun. So yeah, we we've just started discussing ours, so we're not quite sure when it'll be yet. But yeah, back to Keep normal life, peeled. kind of. <laughs> yeah, it would yeah. be safe. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. All right. um, cool. All right. That's that's Svelte Summit. It's exciting. Yep. Twice a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in person next year. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I hope so. It'd be nice. That'd be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. They they actually just removed like the uh all of the restrictions over here. So we're back to normal now. Well wow. as normal as as normal can be at the moment, I guess. The new normal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else or do we want to move on to Unpopular opinions. Unpopular picks. <laughs> uh, uh, I can I can go with the with the first one if um, if uh, people it. want. So I this is again an imported unpopular opinion, but I think it's interesting. I interviewed Mishko Hevery, who was the creator of Angular, and now he's left Google and now is working on a new framework called Quick Q W Y K. And he has a side passion in metabolic health. He doesn't eat vegetables, and he doesn't. He just he's just pure carnivore, including the seed oils for cooking. Um, so no corn oil, like just he uses lard. That's it. And I was just shocked when I learned about this because I, the only way I know how to cook is with oil. And I just can't imagine cooking any other way. And he opened up my mind. So I'm going to try it out. But I think it's a very personal thing because he found he had a reaction to uh, eggs that were cooked with the wrong oil. So oh, wow. uh, maybe if you haven't experimented with like the, the diet and how it affects your mood and your health, uh, it's worth checking out. But he has a very strong view that it should apply to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you did you guys know that McDonald's used to fry their uh, French fries in uh, lard instead of oil? Way way sounds way back. amazing. Sounds great. It does, right? Yeah. 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 I did know about this, and they now put like beef flavoring on them because they obviously do them in oil now. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's that why doesn't, they taste that the doesn't surprise do. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's no seed oils. <laughs> no seed oils. All right. My uh, my unpopular opinion might not be unpopular. It might also be um, unpopular. Who knows? Um, regular old CSS is king. So I've been <laughs> raving a bit about CSS on this on this episode, and uh, I think I'm going to stick to my uh, stick to my opinion that CSS is. Pretty nice, like the old way of writing CSS. It's actually nicer than than it might seem at first for for people that dislike it. What float right? That's it. Float right. 
<laughs> Tip. Use, use GIFs. Definitely try and use GIFs for uh, spacing. Just try table to... layout. <laughs> yeah, tables for layouts. You name it. <laughs> does this mean that your does this mean that your love for Tailwind has dwindled? Mine it must be. I don't think. I don't think I have ever really loved. Oh, Tailwind, okay. I so. think <laughs> I, I think I'm the token Tailwind person here. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, so. maybe. Yeah, I thought I thought you were both sort of Tailwind inclined, as it were. No, I'm very Tailwind inclined. Oh. I want to build. I want to build a Svelte REPL that also has Tailwind, so that I can just <laughs> copy and paste components. Right. Mm. I mean, it's, it's it's a nice idea for sure. Yeah. Someone else can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, do you have uh, an unpopular opinion, entity? Uh, I have loads of them. I just don't know any of them right now. Uh, all right. Well, I'm always hating be, uh, on something. There's always something that's bothering me, and I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> I've, like I've seen it, you. you know, uh, I've little... seen you tweeting a lot lately about customer service or something on oh, some the, weird companies. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can rage about rage about uh, Samsung forever. Don't buy a Samsung TV. Are we allowed to say that? I guess we are. Don't buy them. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's a good company. I think buy LG all the way. You just lost our, our Samsung sponsorship. Oh, well, never mind. Eh? We don't want them. <laughs> well, that, a huge spot, one. Go sponsor someone else. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm just, you know, it's kind of a personal experience thing with my guests, but one of their TVs we had, it broke after two years, and they, they, they literally couldn't be any less interested in the fact their TV lasted two years for a 4K TV as well. It's like, hmm. all right then, I'm not interested in buying any more. Simple as that, really. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. And it's a, it's a, you know, I'm saying it's a, it's a known fault, and they're saying, well, we haven't got a log of it being a known fault. Well, I'm like, well, if you search it in Google with the word Samsung, you find maybe a hundred people plus with the same exact problem. That's a known fault by definition, right? Whether you log that or not, it's a known fault. Yeah. You know, when, when unless all their customers are making it up, some kind of weird conspiracy against Samsung, <laughs> probably not. That's yeah. That's yeah. So that's that's probably that's my. It's not an unpopular opinion. Being treated, getting terrible customer service well, for a product you're right. and hating them for it is not an unpopular opinion. No, I agree. I agree. I think that sounds legit. Like uh yeah. it's it's it feels like it's a playbook of larger like corporations to do s- yeah. stuff like that. Like they kind of I think, I think. kind of just like pretend there is no issue and it's like, oh no. Yeah. We ha- we haven't noticed this. We haven't seen this. <laughs> Yeah, well, so that, can, that's it. Just so and, they can refuse, they refuse you. Exactly, and and also one of the forums I was reading it mentioned that one customer had had their TV replaced by Samsung for the same problem. I'm like, well, if that isn't the definition, are you just giving out free TVs or what? <laughs> if that isn't the <laughs> definition of a known problem, then I'm not sure what is. So, yeah, yeah. not in my good books <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about picks. Yes. I've got I've got one. Swedish cinnamon buns. You should all go to IKEA right this moment and get some cinnamon buns. It's the national uh, cinnamon day. Cinnamon day. Nice. That's that's my I pick. Like cinnamon buns. <laughs> you didn't find them here much, but I like them. Do you know if they're different from the rest of the world uh, cinnamon buns? I I think the the main difference is just that they're not. They don't have that like glaze of sugar thing. That's pretty common, and I think I think there's even a company called like Cinnabon. Cinnabon, yeah, yeah, they're in the UK as well. Yeah, so it's so, it's without that. So it's just the vanilla stuff in between, like the real in between the layers. The, Is that there's right? no there's no vanilla in between cinnamon. Uh, sorry, sorry, vanilla, cinnamon. I mean, in, in the inside there. Yep, and, and it's kind of rolled up. The, yeah, yeah, it's tied up in in like a cool shape. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's not super cool, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, then there's some like you can have some sugar on top. Um, it's just not the the glaze stuff. It's not pretty. This is very common. There's a place in Soho in Golden Square called Nordic Bakery, and they they do what you're describing, I think, and they're really good. Really yeah. good. It's a it's a good day to to get some cinnamon buns. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Sean, sure, you got a pick? Yeah, I can go with mine, which is a YouTube video I just uh, recommended to 
uh, my Discord called "How to Be Miserable for the Rest of Your Life." Um, this is basically the opposite of all the motivational video uh, advice that you see, and if it resonates, then if, if it basically describes you, then I think it, it really helps to wake you up into how you could probably, you know, get yourself out of a rut, which I think, I think, um, I mean, some of us will apply because we're all, you know, flawed in some way, but I just thought it was a very interesting inversion of the regular trope of, you know, uh, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Um, and so I think sometimes when, when people do, you know, when you're not getting a message across, if you just invert it, people can really respond to it very well. Mm. Yeah, how to be sure. miserable for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I so, 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 so examples like procrastinate, uh, make sure your house is a complete disaster, focus on things yeah. you can't control, use fear as a motivation, <laughs> only do what is comfortable, believe you are special. Wow. Uh, so, oh, I, li- I like the last one. See life not how it is, but how you wish it to be. Um, so very poor. that is kind of a of a mo- motivating thing like the last one if you want to shape the well, world into into if you're in a like, rut though if you're yeah, in a rut you're thinking yeah, of the world the wrong way <laughs> no it it sounds nice I'll, I'll definitely watch this like uh, it. I, I think it's a lot se- of these it's seven like, minute video yeah yeah <laughs> worth a watch yeah, I think these okay, motivational my... videos can be kind of over the top often. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, so exaggerated. <laughs> um, so my pick is Lumen Kucha. I think that's how you say it. Uh, LED face changing mask, also known as shining mask, um, which may just be a really weird translation. But essentially, this is like a mask that goes over your face, your whole face. And it's covered in LED, like an LED panel. And then you have an app on your phone called Shining App or something like that. And you basically can upload videos, photos, whatever you else want to it, and it will show them on your face. And so some of the product demos have like this lady who's who's turning her head, kind of looking around, and it's on your face. And it's a really kind of weird, you know, it's like you change your own face. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, I, I bought one of these masks because I'm going to a... I'm going to a rave because uh, I'm I'm at that age and I'm not, but you know I am anyway. It's tough, <laughs> and I thought this would be kind of a cool a cool way of doing things. Uh, so I I bought the mask, and I I, I don't know what I'm going to upload. I'm going to upload some some faces, maybe some videos. I don't know, just to basically freak people out. I think it'd be quite fun. Yeah. Uh, Have you tried space it? Space age, maybe. I've tried it. Yes, I've tried it briefly. It's only with the stock stuff that comes on it. Um, but yeah, my plan is to is to get some unique looking videos together before I, I get to wear it. So yeah, it should be good fun. But it's, I mean, it's when you watch it on the product videos, it's actually amazing. It's, it's really cool. Like really well thought out. They also apparently do like a regular, like a COVID mask as well. That just has that AD panel on it. So oh, you can wow. <laughs> do your own animations and videos and messages on that too. So yeah, it's cool. That sounds really awesome. Cool. I want one. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a really good product. It's on, it's on there. There's a link anyway on the, on the show. Dialogue, but it's basically from Etsy, I think. Um, yeah, it's cool. All right, that's us for this uh, this episode. Let's uh, let's do it more uh, more frequently in the future. <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> oh, I should uh, I should also mention that uh, we have a Patreon, or and we actually have six patrons at the moment that are nice. supporting the show, Yay. which is awesome. Yeah, we love you. So we 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 definitely do. <laughs> we should read these people out when we, when we, next one we'll read them out and give yep. them the credit where let's, credit due is due let's, let's do that all right okay until next time take care guys bye bye bye, bye.